Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today the question is, what are transference and countertransference? And these are terms that we get from Sigmund Freud, from his psychoanalytic theory. And he believed that both of these occur fairly regularly, or have the potential to occur fairly regularly in counseling sessions. Well, if Freud was so wrong about so many things, why are we still holding on to this concept, this idea? I've heard that every now and then. Uh, there's a lot of skepticism about significant parts of psychoanalytic theory. Freud definitely had some ideas that we would consider outside the mainstream now. He also had a lot of ideas that have held up through the test of time, like the unconscious mind and defense mechanisms. And I believe transference and countertransference are among those concepts that are particularly relevant today in modern counseling. So could transference be a good thing? Transference can be a good thing. So let's talk about how transference works. Transference is when you have a counselor and a client, and the client starts to treat the counselor like someone else in their life. So let's say the client is a woman and the counselor is a man. The client may start to treat the counselor like her father or her brother. And this is a fairly common occurrence. And if a counselor recognizes that transference, they see that occurring, they can use that to help progress treatment. They can use that to help the client make a breakthrough in understanding their thoughts, emotions, or behaviors. So the answer would be transference is good as long as the counselor can identify it and use it to help meet treatment goals. If, that, if that's the case, uh, wouldn't countertransference be good as well? Countertransference is an entirely different construct. With countertransference, the counselor is redirecting emotions toward the client. And we view this in counseling as negative, as destructive for the client. So say, for example, in that, that example I used before with a male counselor and a female client, let's say the male counselor has a daughter and he has a contentious relationship with that daughter and the client talks about something that she did that was similar to what the daughter did. So now the counselor, if he's countertransferring, may start to express anger or frustration toward the client, but the source of that is really his relationship with his daughter. This is destructive. Another example of countertransference is when a counselor is attracted to a client. And of course we know that with this situation, a counselor needs to be aware and get in front of those feelings right away, seek supervision, and not act in any way on that feeling, on those thoughts. Now, it's worth mentioning that that attraction piece can also happen with transference. And that, that's a fairly common way of transferring as well. When a client has an attraction for a counselor, the counselor can manage that and help the client manage that. When a counselor has attraction for a client, that's destructive and the counselor needs to get in front of that. And I think as you practice as a counselor and you learn more and you grow and you have experience and you seek supervision, you should be more able to be aware about how you're feeling and thinking and behaving and prevent any type of countertransference from causing damage to a client.